Hi, and welcome back to VR Essentials, where we talk about the practical uses of virtual reality and everything about the metaverse. In today's video, we're going to dive right in as I'm going to show you some footage using the Pico 4 with Half-Life Alex streaming completely wirelessly to the PC. And we're going to use two different settings, one of which will be 72 Hertz, which is basically 72 frames per second at HD mode, and also smooth mode, which is less good than HD. HD and I will be releasing a separate video using a 90 Hertz refresh rate or 90 frames per second separately to show you the differences because of course the Pico is not perfect and there are some challenges here and there so you know let's just go through it now first of all I'd also wish to thank you for watching the live stream that we did with a live Q&A of the Pico 4 test using the standalone games and not the Air Link wireless streaming to the PC VR using Ultimax by Resolution Games and also After the Fall by Virtu Vertigo Games. So thank you very much for that. Now let's go back to today's video. So the first of all, I am streaming everything from my studio and my studio I would say is about 10 meters away from the router and there is a wall with a door closed in between. Now for those who've been following the channel for quite a while will know that I've been doing a lot of testing with wireless streaming both with the uh, the actual stream of the Quest 1 and also with the Pico Neo 3 Link and everyone will know that I've always struggled a lot because when I was streaming from my studio with the door closed in between and the wall, everything was always struggling. There was a lot of latency. There was a lot of cutting in terms of the graphics and nothing was really working properly. So fast forward a couple years or a year and a half, you know, into the future or into the present as it were. And as you can tell, I'm inside of my studio, as I mentioned before, with the door closed and also the wall in between and everything is working perfectly when I'm in smooth locomotion. So there are some differences between smooth and also the HD setting. To change the settings between smooth and HD, or whether you want to change between 72 Hertz and 90 Hertz, all you have to do is go on the actual software on the PC itself. Just click a couple of buttons and it is really easy, very intuitive. There isn't much to do, to be honest. And then you just launch SteamVR, which will be done automatically for you. You do not need to do this every single time manually, FYI. So the Pico 4 is really meant to be very ergonomic and very straightforward. You just press one button to basically quick start it and then go inside of the actual Pico 4 after you've enabled the software on the PC to start the actual streaming to the PC via the actual Pico 4 settings itself. So again, it is extremely easy. You just have to press one or two buttons here and there. Everything is done for you completely automatically. There isn't really anything to do. Now let's talk a little bit about the actual challenges or the constraints of streaming wirelessly inside of the PC using the smooth setting to begin with. So the smooth setting, as I mentioned, is not the HD. So it will definitely not be as good as streaming the HD. For example, there are definitely going to be some, I would say, artifacting or compression that will definitely be noticeable. And in the video today, of course, you will notice these based on when I'm zooming into the footage and showing you more of a macro view instead of showing you the actual recording of the normal resolution as it were. The other thing that I need to stress is that in today's recording, we are using a test Pico 4 headset, which is the latest testing headset compared to the latest headset that you will get. There will of course perhaps be some differences in terms of the hardware that may be more advanced or more up to date comparing to the hardware that I'm using today. However, some things I guess will not really change, including for example, the IPD adjuster, which is using a motor inside of the actual headset itself. And I must say is magical compared to the Pico Neo 3 Link or the Quest 2. Although I've never used the Quest 2, I do need to stress this as well. But the way you set the IPD is the same 
has the Pico Neo 3 link. In the Pico 4, you just use basically electronically, go into the settings, press a few buttons, and the actual lenses will move with a motor automatically for you when you're adjusting it. So it's pretty magical, as I mentioned. The lenses also are using a pancake kind of lenses and not Fresnel, which means you will not have all the rings going around the actual lenses itself, and there won't be as much light or glaring inside of the headset itself. However, I do need to say that if you do have lights pointing towards you, especially at the back of the headset, the light will still leak inside of the headset. This is not really something that you can get away with. There are some things that you can do, however, including putting a cap on, which is why you see me wearing a cap. It would definitely help the light leaking situation there and make the gameplay more, I would say, personal because you won't really feel that the outside world will protrude inside of your gameplay. Now, the quality inside of Half-Life Alex when you're using the Pico 4 at smooth settings, I must admit that even though there are some artifacting or compression, as it were, which basically will come across as some blurring here and there, especially in the dark areas and sometimes in the very bright areas as well, doesn't really disturb me and I'm very happy to continue the gameplay as it is, especially if you're someone who perhaps has never tried VR before. It's not something that will disturb you so much, but of course, compared to, let's say, an HP Reverb G2, where you have no artifacting of any kind, and the graphics are just absolutely gobsmacking, then you will perhaps feel that it will disturb you. But as someone who has tried the Pico 4 for more than 200 hours and tried the HP Reverb G2 for more than, let's say, 5,000 hours, I would say, perhaps, then I am very content in using my Pico 4. But as I said, if you really want optimum, optimum gameplay, as you can say, see here at the gates, there is definitely much more compression. And also when you're going towards the train, there is more compression. However, it really doesn't disturb me. So in terms of that, it's not really noticeable, although it is quite noticeable compared to, as I mentioned before, a tethered experience to the PC. However, when you are using the 72 Hertz HD, the compressing actually will go away. And we'll talk about this a little bit more when we get to the actual side-by-side -side comparison of the smooth gameplay to the actual HD gameplay. So here, as you can tell, when I'm looking at the zombie, and do, do look away if you are a little bit squintish, but you know, the graphics are absolutely amazing. You can definitely tell that, for example, the textures are absolutely you know, spot on. There is no jagged edges of any kind. You can tell that there's a lot of uh, specularity with the maps and you can see that there's a lot of wet areas on the actual materials and the wet areas do not come out as being jaggered. I including also when you're inside of a darker, let's say, environment and in this environment there's a lot of water around or there's some water or some let's say, humidity on the walls, you will not see so many jagged edges. Everything is really clear and the compression isn't so noticeable other than perhaps on some parts of the wall or some parts of the objects. For example, when I'm putting my hand to get more, let's say, life uh, onto the actual rustles, then you'll see that it's really kind of clear and the actual I would say detail in the actual rustles themselves with the wires, with the hearts, the, the detail of the actual, let's say, uh, textures of the leather of the actual hands and all these kind of things. It just really looks amazing. I have to say that the comparison to um, you know, a tethered experience using the HP Reverb G2, which is 4K per eye. And, you know, the actual graphics of the Pico is 4.3K per eye and not 4K per eye. So the resolution of the Pico 4 has definitely really come a long way compared to the HD format, or it's less than HD, in fact, with the Pico Neo 3 Link. And you'll definitely notice these details when you have the headset on your head, because when you're streaming wirelessly to the PC, it really will feel much more clearer and higher resolution than using, for example, for those who have a Quest 2 or for those who have the Pico Neo 3 Link, as both headsets themselves are supposed to be very, very 
alike in terms of resolutions they are absolutely the same and also the lenses that are used in order to create the effect or the graphics effect inside of the headset are also absolutely the same now you can see that we're inside here of a uh, cave or underground bunker and yes i did zoom in the graphics here because there are a little bit of compression but I have to admit that everything is very smooth and I have an amazing, as I mentioned, gameplay. So for those who have a, I would say, gaming PC and who are first time PC VR, for me, I would say that it is amazing to be able to stream wirelessly without having any cables of any kind. And the Pico team or development team has come a long, long way when it comes to streaming things to the actual PC, considering, as I mentioned again, first of all, I am using a test kit and not the final kit, both in terms of hardware, but also more importantly, also in terms of software. So your software, when you purchase the Pico 4, will also be more advanced compared to the software that I'm using right now for the recording of this video. So it is very difficult to tell if you are someone who doesn't want to spend double the amount of money in terms of PC and in terms of, let's say, standalone um, experience, then, you know, and if you've never tried PC VR for the first time, then I think that, you know, this kind of headset will actually do for you uh, quite fine. However, if you are a avid hardcore PC VR fan, then it is possible that this artifacting will be something that you perhaps do not really wish to experience and you want to experience absolutely high fidelity, then perhaps it is possible that the Pico 4 is not so much for you. However, I do have to stress that, and we will talk about this a little bit more when I do the side-by-side -side comparison between the HD graphics and also the smooth graphics, because of course there are some differences there, as I mentioned before, including how the gameplay actually goes when you're running the Pico 4 wirelessly, when you're away from the router, let's say in another room like myself just now, and you have the door closed with a wall in between, and you're about 10, 15 meters, 10, 15 meters away, excuse me. There will be some differences there. But I do have to say that, as I mentioned before, when we are in HD, especially when you're in 90 hertz, a lot of the artifacting actually goes away. So, you know, there's going to be some give and take there in terms of how the performance is for you because mm, PC tethered VR, PC VR tethered, excuse me, and wireless VR is getting extremely close. So now let's start off a little bit the experience with the tether, with, sorry, not the tethered experience, but with the HD experience of the Pico 4. Now it is going to be quite night and day, the differences between, let's say, the smooth gameplay, which is not in HD, and the HD gameplay. And this is where we're going to be doing some side-by-side -side comparison. On the HD gameplay, I have to admit that the compression that you see a lot on the smooth gameplay really does go away. And I have to say that I am absolutely amazed in terms of the gameplay between the HD when it's enabled, comparing it to the smooth gameplay. However, HD gameplay does have its, I would say, cons, as well as its cons, of course, compared to the smooth gameplay. As I just mentioned just now, the smooth gameplay, well, you will see some artifacting here and there, especially when you have a lot of different textures going on or the details. For example, here we're looking at the screen. Now the screen, you'll definitely tell, you'll definitely feel that everything is much sharper with things that are more in front of you. However, the textures at the back will also be much sharper and have less artifacting compared to the smooth gameplay. However, where the differences lie between the smooth gameplay and the HD gameplay, when you're using, well, I'm using a test kit, as I mentioned before, both for the hardware and also the hardware. Just want to mention here, as you could see with some magnification, that on the left-hand side with the HD, her head is much more detailed compared to the right-hand side. And do go back to take a look again as often as you want to see the differences 
similarities between the left hand side with the HD gameplay and the right hand side with the smooth gameplay. So coming back to the differences in terms of the cons is that well with the smooth gameplay you get some artifacting however with the HD gameplay well from time to time especially before big scenes or animated scenes will load you will definitely have some I would call blinders around your headset on the right side and the left side and it is very noticeable or much more noticeable when you're actually moving your head side to side. Now these blinders at 72 Hertz, I must stress this, and not 90 Hertz refresh rate will not kill the gameplay and will not, let's say, make everything mm, latency in terms will not stop the gameplay, will not be choppy, and will certainly not give you a headache, I would say, or motion sickness. It will be completely fine. All you will see on the side of your headset will basically be some black cropping that will be animating, and it will be quite fast. Now, of course, it can be a little bit irritating, but the gameplay will still be pretty much smooth, especially when you're trying to grab objects, for example. There will be no issues there, no latency. Everything will be pretty smooth. In terms of the actual or let's say explosion with the fire and the fog and all these particles that come across also sometimes will perhaps have, have some of the blinders that will activate on the side of your headset however it will not kill the gameplay as I mentioned just now in terms of going inside of the actual darker areas again it will all the compression and artifacting will actually most of it go away and everything will really be pretty pretty awesome compared to a tethered experience I would say it comes very very close about I would say 90% of what you would get in a tethered experience compared to using for example the HP Revo G2 there are however going to be other differences including the audio you'll definitely hear some crackling of the audio and the audio will stop here and there especially when the scenes are loading or where you have a lot more effects happening or let's say particles with all the various different you know uh, fire and fog and, and and smoke that come out of the you know actual explosions or when you're firing on an actual uh, you know enemy and you see all the particles coming out it's very possible that well it is it does occur that the sound will hear some little cracklings here and there and break the immersion a little bit here and there but as far as I'm concerned it's okay I can still carry on with the gameplay and when I'm right next to the actual router everything is perfect so there you have it guys it's amazing how Pico have come in the last one year and a half in developing the software to stream wirelessly to a PC for example using Half-Life Alex with the Pico 4. In the smooth setting you definitely get smooth gameplay and everything is good including the audio however you do get some issues with the compressing and the artifacting in the gameplay when you're away from the router about 15 meters away with a wall and a door in between but when you're streaming in HD all that goes away although you did get some crackling with the actual audio and some frames will may not render straight away which is why you get the blinders on the side of the headset itself so guys do make sure to hit the notification bell after you subscribe as i will be providing you some gameplay using 90 hertz refresh rate both inside of the studio and also comparing it right next to the router itself see you later